and welcome to Medi Simplified. So today we will talk about maxillary maxillary sinus cancer. So why maxillary ca sinus cancer? First of all, uh, there are many, there are four paralysis in sinus, and each of them have their uh, related cancer. But the most frequently involved sinus and the malignancy is maxillary cancer. So we are discussing it today. So so the most frequently involved sinus in malignancy or i'll say cancer okay so is maxillary more than ethmoid followed by frontal followed by sphenoid so this is the order of the uh, occurrence or the incident num high number of incidents so this was so that's why i chose maxillary can sinus cancer first today so maxillary sinus cancer occurs in workers of furniture industry it's, these are the people now i wish i'm mentioning are those people who are more exposed to this uh, nasal sinuses uh, cancer second is leather workers leather workers and nickel refining i'm removing leather workers because there is a purpose leather workers are also infected and nickel refining labors so the workers of furniture industries are most commonly uh, suffer suffer from adenocarcinoma adenocarcinoma of maxillary sinus or any paranasal sinus why i'm mentioning these two questions separately because these are the these are the questions uh, asked in many exams. So people working in nickel refining industries are suffering suffer mainly from squamous cell carcinoma and anaplastic cancer. So these were the two questions many times asked in many exams. So I have mentioned it. And also leather workers also suffer this uh, maxillary sinus cancer most of the time. Now mm, talking about the maxillary sinus cancers clinical feature so the maximum incidence of the squamous cell carcinoma is seen so the most com mostly squamous cell carcinoma is seen in maxillary sinus cancer it is usually occurred in the people of a specific age group that is 40 to 60 years and the preponderance or you'll say the incidence of preval in prevalence is more in males as compared to female so there are some early features there are some late features so the early features are nasal stiffness blood stained nasal discharge there will be discharge from the nose with blood in it so blood stained nasal discharge also the patient will suffer from pain also the patient will suffer from pain so these are the, some of the early features of the maxillary sinus cancer so there are some late features late features are many so they depend upon the direction of the spread so the, if the cancer is spreading anteriorly there is different features if it is spreading posteriorly there, is, there are different features if it is spreading superiorly or inferiorly for every time there is different kind of late feature so late feature depends upon the spread direction of the spread of the cancer all right so now next suppose we i'll make a maxillary sinus in center so this is the maxillary sinus cancer over here so now if the cancer is spreading anteriorly if the cancer is spreading anteriorly so there might be some features which are the lead features if the sinus is spreading anteriorly it is it will cause swelling of the cheeks the cheeks will be swollen and later there will be an invasion so cause it will cause swelling of cheek and later invasion of the facial skin the facial skin will be invaded by this cancer now coming further i will say going posteriorly if the sinus is going posteriorly it goes to the terigo maxillary fossa if the sinus is spreading posteriorly it goes till the 
terigo maxillary fossa not terigo palatine terigo maxillary fossa and further it may spread till the base of skull base of skull and also sphenoid sinuses so this is how the late features are depending upon how the sinus is spreading anteriorly there is swelling in cheek if posteriorly there are different features now if the sinus is spreading superiorly so suppose here is the maxilla maxillary sinus if it is spreading superiorly so we will have some features that is first of all it will invade the orbit the orbit will be invaded and it will cause proptosis it will cause diplopia and it will cause ocular pain ocular pain now if the same sinus we did anterior posterior superior so now what is left inferior so if the same sinus is spreading inferiorly if it is spreading inferiorly so what here is the sinus if it is spreading inferiorly so what we have inside we have palate we have teeth so we will have a dental pain and the teeth will be loosened so loosening of teeth so these are the late features seen in the maxillary sinus cancer superiorly it invades the orbit ocular pain proptosis inferiorly it will go till the teeth so dental pain and loosening of teeth anteriorly it will cause the swelling of cheek and posteriorly it will go till the pterygo maxillary fossa and may infect the base of skull and sphenoid sinus also so uh, talking about the metastasis nodal metastasis and systemic metastasis so these are the metastasis which is very rarely seen in case of maxillary sinus cancer so we are lucky now what next we'll talk about the diagnosis how we'll do the diagnosis for diagnosis first of all we'll do the radiograph of sinus we'll do the radiograph of sinus scan and now if there is an availability the best non invasive method to detect the extent of the disease or the extent of the cancer is ct scan so if the available the ct scan ct scan is the best non invasive method to detect the extent of the disease and at last we will do the biopsy for biopsy what is important the approach so we use calvel lukes approach for taking the biopsy now going further we discuss the etiology kind of thing we discuss the clinical features the spread of the cancer the diagnosis now one more thing there are many classifications about this maxillary cancers various classification none of uh, and all are adopted by different countries in different manner so first is by the ajcc what is ajcc it is american joint committee american joint committee of cancer so its classification second is ledermans classification ledermans classification and what is important for exam point of view and what we will talk now is ongren's classification so what is ongren's classification an imaginary line is drawn from the medial canthus to the angle of the mandible like this and the structure above it is called as suprastructure below it is called as infrastructure so here it is this is the imaginary ongren's line structure above it is supra structure below it is infrastructure so what is the significance of it there might be some significance so the supra structure are having poorer prognosis as compared to the infrastructure and the infrastructure are having good prognosis and as compared to the supra structure so the it is just a classification on the basis of the prognosis i'll say now talking about the management so management is very uh, challenging thing so i have ma managed it in my way so there are many stages so stage 1 and stage 2 we can do either surgery or radiation radio radiation is used and stage 3 onwards stage 3 4 etc radiation and surgery are used in combination radiation and surgery combined 
okay for surgery we do maxillectomy so for maxillectomy there is a special kind of incision used which is asked in many times in exam known as weber ferguson's incision weber weber ferguson's incision so how does it looks just have a look at it so here is the line or the incision which is done and this is how it is opened and this are the this is the area where the maxillary sinus is situated so we operate it like that so this was all about maxillary sinus cancer we uh, talking about the, okay one more thing is remaining that is the tnm classification so for the tnm classification you all know we have an instagram page so i'll put the tnm classification it is just to memorize so i'll put it on instagram and also on facebook you may get it anywhere you want and also the link will be mentioned in the description so that was all about the maxillary sinus cancer it is the most frequent occurring sinus cancer that is in the par uh, paranasal sinuses it uh, in the workers of uh, nature industry adenocarcinoma in nickel refining squamous cell carcinoma it is seen more mainly in 40 to 60 years of age male are more affected than female so and everything is mentioned the features late and early the diagnosis the classification important organs classification and the management and for tnm classification please go to the instagram page so thanks for watching the video hope you liked it please like share and subscribe my channel medi simplified thank you